I was always doing my own artwork, um, watercolour paintings and drawing. I, I just loved to, to be able to paint and draw. I uh, started getting cataracts and uh, I had to go to Maidstone Hospital to have them dealt with but unfortunately I think they were left a bit too long. All I can really see is black and white, dark and light. I can't I can't see objects. I can't really do anything apart from feel my way around. Let's hook that door. I was listening to my talking newspaper and there was this sort of advert for sensing culture at Canterbury, the Beanie. I mean, I can't believe how I managed to come across it just by hearing that advert, if you like to call it an advert, on the, um, on the talking newspaper and uh, finding, um, finding the beanie. The Sensing Culture Project at the Beanie is designed to improve the museum and gallery experience for visually impaired visitors. Participants are invited to explore the Beanie's collection and create artwork inspired by their findings. The Sensing Culture sessions are led by professional artist Wendy Dawes. There are people here that previously their visits out of the house had been to the hospital or to the doctors and hadn't been interested in coming, certainly not coming to a museum, what is it that I could do in a museum I can barely see, so this is vital, it's part of their, um, their, their fabric of life now and uh, for some people it's, um, they can't believe that they had stopped doing things. So the confidence that's gained from coming to a session like this ripples out across their entire life. There's a, a, an Anglo-Saxon fish brooch. We've got a 3D resin print of that. And we've been using German film, which is an embossed film to inscribe, and it gives a raised line. Well, we think it's really important for people to actually be here in a museum and gallery setting and really take themselves out of some of the problems that they might be experiencing in their wider life. Um, and also, we find that um, sharing the joy of the objects that are probably the reason that most of us work in museums and galleries is really important because once people are given the chance to handle things and get up close to paintings and generally be here and not be somewhere where they're discussing the issue that might be affecting them but um, for a while escape from that is really really important. If I think about John's journey, meeting him three and a half years ago he was perhaps lacking in confidence about what he could achieve. So in terms of his making, it's huge. If, if I think of meeting John at the beginning as a scale, he was down here and now he's off the scale. I just can't do things that I used to do, but with this, I can actually produce something. Uh, and. Uh, it's, it's all thanks to the beanie that I'm doing this. People affected by dementia or social isolation are welcome to join the beanie Power of the Object group for theme sessions with object handling and gallery visits. Well, we actually came to the title for the group, Power of the Object, because we realised that it was about sharing the joy of the objects that we have in the collection. So it's all about being in this space, being close up to paintings and objects in the collection and actually being able to handle them. We've been coming to this group, this is about the fourth time we've been now, and we've both found it very beneficial. We had a look at some of the Roman brooches that had been found in the Canterbury district and it was nice to be able to handle them 
and see what different materials they made of. Some were clay and some were bronze. After that, we made some of our own, doing designs on cardboard, drawing them out and cutting them out and making up brooches and pins and things. Not only was it very helpful to look at the artefacts, but then to have a creative outlet, having seen the object, to see whether it could inspire the group members to um, design and make things that they would find of value to them. And then we often go on to do a creative activity related to that, and we have the opportunity to uh, try on a, a toga and a cloak that a Roman would have used. Yeah, it's just generally fun time for everyone and takes a bit of the stress of everything out. Dementia seems to be in so many different ways, striking people in different ways. Uh, it's nice to talk with these people and find out how they cope with different situations. Then important these sessions because we learn something about the subject we're talking about and we gives us something to talk about with other people. And we go home and we look up in books or we get here the books and everything that it is. Just learning something every day. founder and artistic director of Canterbury Count Doctor Trust, which incorporates Sing to Beat and Sing to Beat Parkinson's. Activities such as singing can be very effective in treating speech difficulties related to Parkinson's. One, one, one of the areas of my problem with Parkinson's is speaking. One, one of the other things with the voice is it loses its, its power and you tend to fade away and when you, when you want to get in a conversation with someone, you speak. I, I think I'm speaking loudly, they don't hear me. It's very, 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 very frustrating. Whereas now I've had the, 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 the input from Nicola and, and, and people singing and the adrenaline's been running and uh, it's fine. Maybe 10 minutes time, I'll maybe stammering and stuttering again. It may be that just during that period of taking part in singing, you'll actually just have some sort of relief from that sort of intervention. So if you like, we're using singing as a, an intervention. Nice. Oh, with your trombone and your saxophone, ring a ding through the land. If you don't know that, but you do know this bit. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So each of these sessions, by observation, you will have noticed that actually a lot of laughter took place. A lot of, there's obviously a lot of singing, but a lot of movement as well. So those three things, when they're taking place through the medium of singing, means that the brain is really fired up. It's very difficult to think about anything else when you're singing. And those three elements actually separate us out from other species. I think the sessions have been impacting from week to week. I think it's really, we've seen them progress. And they, first they came in, a lot of them quite timid, quite shy, weren't really sure about what they were doing here. And actually, as we've progressed, it's been really interesting to see how the children have relaxed. And I think the parents have as well. I think um, ultimately it's been fun. And I think, you know, we should never underestimate how much fun can impact on people's well-being. Creative dance sessions led by Joe Freighter, founder of Confidance, use the Beanies collection as inspiration for dance and free flow movement. So at the start of the session the children come in and we give them an option of three smiley faces to choose from. They then stick that on the mood board. Um, 
the idea being that that's uh, the child's opportunity to reflect on how they're feeling at the start and then select that and place that on the board um, as part of our process of measuring the impact of the sessions. So, explorers, we're going back to Egypt. The children um, then learnt about the toys of ancient Egypt. To create that sense of curiosity and permission to engage in the museum and the galleries, we hid the toys, um, the artefacts that we were given by the beanie around the space, so they felt a sense of discovery. Has Cosmas found one? Very good over here. One, two. And used those toys as inspiration, talked a little bit about the history of them. I'd like to show you all this toy. See ya. Do you want to come and pull this for me very gently? And then we did some creative movement work around the activity that each toy offered. At the beginning, when I decided to join the, the class, it's called Creative Movement. And uh, from what I see, I think that it will benefit my child because she's a little bit reserved. And I didn't expect much that actually I am also be the one that can benefit from this kind of activity that when we have like a parent and child have an interactive movement and activity together. Because I myself actually, I, I, I has been diagnosed with um, a moderate uh, anxiety and depression as well. And actually it's benefit me. I think it's the same amount or even more than what my child can benefit from the class because the class tell us that like how can we engage with the child and how movement and activity can boost up our, our energy and our uh, minds as well. It can be really difficult being a parent of, of young children. I think you can feel really isolated and alone and you know that can have a really detrimental effect on your mental well-being. I think by running these classes here in this beautiful building with these you know, inspirational collections, um, we can really affect people's positive well-being. Mindfulness Mondays are an important session for peace and well-being in your own mind. Uh, they involve sitting and observing paintings and objects in the, in the galleries, in the museum, and in total silence, having cleared your mind of all extraneous thoughts. And then you, we just we ask you prompts that you have to think about. Don't answer. You just you know you think about and you, you muse on them, and your mind might wander to something else, and that's fine. And it's all about sort of focusing your energies on that one object for five whole minutes, which is a very long time to be staring at one thing. The impact is very visible um, throughout the session um, when people become much calmer and more relaxed during the session. I think sessions like this are important for everyone and in particular people who, who carry particular stresses and strains in their lives. If you have good health and well-being then you're actually able to achieve things that you want to do in life. Um, you're also able to contribute to your local community and you know in society in general. My name's Joyce Armstrong, I'm the facilitator of Canterbury Art Studio and uh, my role is to help people to find and discover their creative identity. So today we were installing and curating the exhibition uh, and that's always in a very exciting time. And so I get people to choose what pieces they feel uh, confident about and I spend time saying, you know, reflecting upon them. So the people that come to the Canterbury Art Studio sessions are um, people with experience, they identify as having, um, or they might describe themselves as experiencing mental ill health and they've had uh, the courage to go along and um, either be referred or refer themselves to Livewell Kentshaw Trust to offer tertiary mental health services to Kent. The Art Fund has conducted inquiries and ascertained that the stress we might experience on a variety of levels day to day is alleviated when we enter the tranquility of the museum and gallery. The 10 artists that are exhibiting here in the front room gallery have taken part in up to 10 or more of the 30 art studio sessions that I facilitated 
and congratulations to all 10 of you artists for a stunning show and thank you for investing your time and taking the courage to take part. Thanks very much. <laughs>saw it on paper when I've done it um, I thought it was mediocre to be honest although we're not supposed to say that uh, but when I walked in and saw it on the wall framed I beamed from ear to ear I never dreamed that I would have uh, my artwork in the beanie um, it's amazing <laughs> We've been in the group and seen the work in the bean is great because it really it's um, also it's uh, not just an opportunity to have what it seems, but it's an opportunity to show parts of yourself that nobody ever, ever sees because it's a creative self. It's your creative self which people don't know they see. The experience of doing the art courses, because I always grew up thinking of myself as a very creative person. I loved to paint and then I just, I got older just seemed to lose that ability to pick up and do stuff and I found I could and I was making things again and I was happy with things I was making I was learning not to be so critical of what I made because at least it's mine and I've learned that I can carry on and do things in my own life and to be less critical of myself and that's just been such a helpful and like healthy and healing experience for me. Just seeing it all framed, it was like a myriad of feelings. At first it was awe, and then shock, and then surprise, and, but also a sense of reassurement. And I sort of initially thought a doubt started to come in, and I was worried about what people would think about my artwork, because half my lifetime, the artwork I've done, as well as poetry, has always been a secret thing for me. So sharing some of it with the world is, is quite daunting at first, but also it doesn't have to be a secret much anymore. It's a real honour and a privilege to listen to people's journeys and also their discovery of the power uh, that is art and the art process and the healing nature of art, art and, and ultimately, of course, about the art therapy process. I think we've learned a lot more about the objects in the collection and also about my colleagues. It has actually helped me feel a little bit calmer um, just when delivering the workshops. Um, but also it's just lovely just to see how people interacting with the objects in the museum. I think it's, it's really important that the Beanie continues doing this kind of work because I've, in the four weeks that we've been doing this I've seen the impact that it's had on the parents and the, and the children and the, the reports that we've had back from the parents, you know, some of them have been saying to me they've been singing that song all week, um, they've really been looking forward to coming back. Well I think just, just look around you because it's fantastic to work at the Beanie, um, it's a beautiful building, it's full of, you know, inspirational collections um, and I think those collections tell a really interesting story about humanity, about us, about me, uh, you know, and I think that, that's, that's going to have a really positive effect on, on, my, on my health and well-being. I certainly, you know, I certainly feel really good at work, so it must be good. <laughs>